Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Integrated Math 2. In today's episode, we will be discussing Chapter 2.3.1, which is Conditions for Triangle Similarity. And the conditions for triangle similarity are very similar to the uh, conditions for triangle congruence and the fact that they involve a set of corresponding angles and sides in some order. And so let's go ahead and review the, the congruence conditions first. We know that like side, side, side is one of them, right? If all three sides are congruent, and then all three sides are, and then the triangles are going to be congruent. So then there's angle, side, angle that worked, angle, angle, side, and side, angle, side, and HL. And so for the conditions for similarity, I'm sure they'd be pretty similar, but right now we don't know what they are. So I'll just put a resounding question mark right there. We don't really know what the conditions are. But we are going to find out in this lesson, and we're going to start off with problem 2-69. And uh, it says that Scott is looking at the triangles below. He thinks that triangle EFG and HIJ uh, are similar, uh, but he is not uh, sure that the shapes are drawn to scale. Okay, a couple of things. One, we are skipping 2-68, which is dealing with just having you guys deal with uh, pasta. Uh, but obviously, I'm not going to do that in this video because I don't have pasta that you guys can see. Um, and uh, quite frankly, I ate it all. So from here, the other thing that I'm going to have you guys understand is that this little symbol right here means similar. So let's go ahead and get that notation down, right? So, so this means congruent, but just the little tilde day at the top means similar. So let's make sure we keep that in our notes because we don't want to get confused with the notation here. It says, are all corresponding measures all equal? And it says, convince Scott that the triangles are similar. So here's the thing, is that we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we look at triangle, if we look at triangle HIJ, we can look at his angles and say 68 plus 87 plus X should be 180, right? And then we're going to go ahead and calculate. So we've got 68 plus 87, uh, which is going to be 155 plus X being 180. If I subtract 155 from either side, I'm going to get X equals 25, which we should have seen coming because the 25 here in angle F. So that angle right there is 25 degrees, which leads me to believe that if we do the same thing for triangle EFG, then what we're going to get is we're going to get a total of 68 degrees here. Now, remember back from the last lesson, and that was that a dilation is what happens when a figure is enlarged or shrunken, but all of the inside pieces, all of the angles stay the same. So because all three of these angles are the same, that means that the triangles are at minimum similar. One might just be proportionally expanded compared to the other. So I believe that these triangles are similar. They are similar in part A. They're similar by what I'm going to call angle, 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 AAA. Now, a couple things to note about this. One, AAA did not work for triangle congruence, right? Just because all three angles are the same didn't have to mean that the triangles were exactly the same, but they can be similar that way. And so from here, they, we can say similar by angle, angle, angle. Now, part B asks the better question, is that how many pairs of angles need to be congruent to be sure that the triangles are similar? Why and how could you abbreviate this similarity condition? So the fact that they're asking me to abbreviate angle, angle, angle means there might be a shorter way to do it. So from here, how many pairs of angles need to be congruent? Well, actually, it, it could very well be argued that all you need are two angles. You only need two pairs of congruent angles. Now, if you're wondering like why that is, well, look at the math that we did. We figured out the third angle because every single triangle that we deal with has an angle sum of 180 degrees because all triangles have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So realistically, all you need are two angles to figure out the third one so that if all three angles are congruent, then you have triangle similarity. So actually, you could just shorten this. So you could say, therefore, only AA is needed for, for 
similarity. So this similar by AAA, it's a bit redundant. I wouldn't consider it wrong. It's a little overkill is what it is. And so for this one, only AA would be necessary. So let's keep that. Let's get rid of this first question mark here. AA is a good condition for similarity. It will be our first. Okay, give me a second. I'll be back with the next problem. And we're back with 2-70. And it's saying after investigating angle-angle similarity, Carlos is asking, what if we know that one pair of angles is congruent, but the other two pairs of corresponding sides are proportional? Does that mean that the triangles are similar? So you're supposed to use the student E tool here in order to, or you can use a straw and protractor to test this out. So we've got this triangle here with an, with an inside angle of 20 degrees and one side of four, one side of five. And what they're asking us to do is they're asking to draw another triangle. I'll go ahead and change colors there. Another triangle, and it may not be drawn to scale, but that's okay. And they want me to keep the inner angle as 20 degrees and then, and then make the side lengths proportional, uh, proportionally changed. So let's go with eight and 10, basically a scale factor of two. And what they're asking is, is this second triangle always similar to the first triangle? Well, let's find out. In 2-70, it says after investigating the angle, angle, triangle similarity, Carlos asks, what if we know that one pair of angles is congruent, but the other two pairs of corresponding sides uh, that make the angle, what if they're proportional? Does that mean that the triangles are similar? Uh, for this activity, you're supposed to use the E tool or pasta and protractors uh, in order to find out if they are. It turns out that they will be. So yes, the triangles will be similar. The point of the next few activities is to, you will be determining what conditions allow for triangle similarity. And so basically what it boils down to is you end up with angle, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. And technically you could consider angle, side, angle to be one of them. Having said that, when there's two angles, you don't really need the side. So angle, side, angle kind of falls under this angle, angle quality. So let's go and find out if these triangles are similar using the theorems that we just found that we just found out. So it says decide if the, each pair of triangles below is similar. If they are, give the triangle a similarity condition and describe the sequence of transformations, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So are these two triangles similar? Well, let's find out. If we have triangle, if we have triangle JPO, right? He has two angles in there, 32 degrees and 52 degrees. So if I subtract those from 180, if I do 180 minus 32 minus 52, that's gonna be, that's gonna be 96 degrees. So 96 degrees in here. Now that 96 matches this 96, which means this angle K has to be 52 degrees. So from here, we know that angle P is equal to 96, angle K is equal to 52. So I would say, yes, these are similar. I would say, yes, similar by angle, angle. And then you could say that to flip the JPO into KVX, you could flip JPO and shrink him using dilation. Let's find out if B is similar because it looks like these two angles, angle, Angle U is congruent to angle F, so we know those are the same. But let's find out if the sides are proportional, right? Because remember, we're not looking for congruence, we're looking for similarity. So if I do 14 over 44.8, is that the same as 20 over 64? Well, let's find out in just a second. 14 over 44.8, I'm gonna get 22.4 on the bottom and seven up top. 20 over 64, I believe they both divide into four, so I'm gonna get five over 16. These guys do not equal, they don't have the same scale factor. These guys are not similar, even though side angle side seems to be kind of a thing. Part C is a classic problem here. We will, they are, they're, they're similar. And it's really hard to tell because you've only, it seems like you've only got one angle right here. But look at what's going on with this triangle. Notice the angle that they both share. They both share this angle M. So if I was to split this guy into two separate triangles, you'd have the ticked uh, angle here, and then, uh, and then you'd have this angle here, which is the exact same thing 
as the larger triangle on the outside, which is M S L. And they already have that congruent ticked angle, but they share this angle M. So I would say angle N is congruent to angle S and angle M is congruent to angle M. So uh, they are similar by angle angle again. Now the last one here is going to be a little bit tricky. I want to uh, probably flip the, flip the, uh, this W over, but let's find out if uh, if the triangles are similar. So I'm going to go and just draw this figure flipped over. So that means that the W is up top, the B is on the side, and the Y is right here. Uh, that puts the 90 here, the 202.oops, 202.4, and the 211.2. Let's find out if they're if they're proportional. So 18 over 90. Uh, 44 over 202.4, and then uh, 58.5 over uh, 211.2. And at this point, with these types of numbers, you're best off going to a calculator. So 18 over 90, let's get a decimal for that. It's 0.2. I don't know about this one. 44 divided by 202.4, it is not. It is not 0.2. So this is not similar. So we'll probably go into the proofs a little bit in the next section, but for now, just understand the similarity theorems, and uh, that should be good enough. I will see you all in the next episode. As always, leave comments or questions in the comments area.